Yu-Gi-Oh! is an expensive game, but it doesn't have to be. Last time I made one of these videos, a lot of you guys in the comments did give a lot of great deck suggestions, so this time around, I'm going to be focusing on those decks. Thank you guys so much for all of you who have commented all your deck suggestions. Please feel free to comment deck suggestions in the comments below, and next time I do one of these videos, I will be covering those budget decks next time. But that's not the happen from me. But first... About 83% of you guys are not subscribed. Subscribing, clicking that like button, and commenting all help me out a lot in doing what I really want to do. Thank you guys so much for all your support. What is going on guys? Rogue TCG here bringing you another budget deck video. This first deck that we have right here is going to be Sword Soul. Thank you so much for the suggestion. I'm going to put the comment that I saw up for the suggestion right up here. Uh, Sword Soul. About $111, as you can see at the left corner, like right over here. That's where the overall price is going to be, not counting the side deck, of course. About $90 in the main, $21 in the extra. A lot of the main deck value is going to be coming out of these infinite impermanences and all these like generic cards. However, the Sword Soul cards do carry a, still a little bit of value. I believe Moye is still about $5. Ah, sure, it's about $10. Damn. Um, but yeah. Um, this deck is quite competent. It can make uh, their line very simply and can play a lot of non-engine. As you can see, we have a little over 15 cards of non-engine, so we should be good on that front. Uh, let's get into the card by card. First, we are on Triple Incredible Ecclesia the Virtuous. It's a spellcaster 2 and a level 4 with 1500 attack, 1500 defense. If your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon it once per turn that way. You can release each of the following effects once per turn. Once per turn in the main phase, quick effect, you can tribute this card, special summon one sword soul monster or one fawn of Albas from your hand or deck. And then during the end phase, if a fusion monster was sent to your graveyard this turn, add it from your grave to your hand. We're never really going to be able to add from grave to hand, unfortunately. However, this does tutor for any of our sword souls. Most commonly, it's going to be Moye or Taya. Speaking of Moye, here we have triple copies of Sword Soul of Moye. If this card's normal or special, you can reveal a Sword Soul or a Worm monster in your hand. Special summon a Sword Soul token. It's going to be a level 4 tuner, so the tokens that they do summon are going to be tuners. And while that token's in the monster zone, the player who summoned it can't special summon monsters from the extra deck except for Synchros. If this card is sent to the graveyard as Synchro Material, you can draw one card, and you can only use each effect of Moye once per turn. Really good at refilling your hand when used to Synchros. It's a one card Synchro 8, meaning it's part of their combo going into Qi Zhao. Um, so yeah, this is overall just an incredible card um, on normal or special. So if you bring it out with the Klesia, you can do it at, or you can just normal summon the Moye. Um, so now we are on a triple copies of Long One. It's going to be a level six monster. You can discard one other Sword Soul card or one Worm monster, special summon this card from your hand. Then you can special summon one Sword Soul token, level four uh, Worm Water. While that token's in the monster zone, the player who summoned it can't special from the extra deck except for Synchros. If this card is sent to the grave as Synchro Material, you can inflict 1,200 damage to your opponent. You can lose each effect of Sword Soul Long One once per turn. Really good at getting that W in time. Making rank 10 Synchros just by discarding a card is really, really strong, especially if you're playing the Tennies that get extra advantage in Graveyard, especially since the token is considered as a non-effect monster. Really strong stuff. Next, we are on two copies of Sword Soul of Taya. This is typically one of our backup plans, per se. Um, this is what we can do if our Moye or our Long One or both of them get interrupted. We can go Taya instead. Also really good in the late game, being able to use our graveyard resources in order to get tokens. Um, so let's read it. It's a level four worm tuner. You can banish one sword soul card or one worm monster from your graveyard, special summon a sword soul token. Uh, you can't special summon except for synchros. And uh, this is used as synchro material. You can send a sword soul or a worm monster from your deck to the grave. This one is arguably one of the better graveyard effects, uh, aside from Moe just being able to draw you a random card, because Taya can dump any of your worms, including, again, the Tennies, really, really strong stuff. Um, so yeah, so we are going to be playing two Taya. I would like to play three, however, that isn't really how the deck functions, and typically we can find two. However, if uh, you do find yourself banishing Taya off of uh, Desires, or you're not seeing it often enough, I would recommend bumping the ratio up to three. 
Next, for our tennies, we're on Triple Ashena. If you control no, uh, all the tennies will have this first effect. If you control no effect monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. If you control a face up non effect monster, you can banish this card from your hand or grave, special summon the tenny from your deck except for Ashena. And then you can't special summon for the rest of the turn except for worm monsters. So do keep in mind that the Shana does lock you out of going into Baron after you use its graveyard effect. So make sure if you are going to be making Baron, make it before you use Ashana. Um, next, we are on Triple Vashada. This one's really good at helping us crack boards. If you control no effect monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. If you control a face up of non effect monster, you can banish this card from your hand or grave. Target one card your opponent controls, return it to the hand. You can only use each effect of Vashada once per turn. Really, really strong at bouncing problematic cards. Um, unfortunately, it does target, so um, there are some counterplays there. However, Vashada just being able to get like a free material by bringing it itself out onto the field, linking off for Monk, and then using the graveyard effect is just incredibly strong. Even if they negate the, uh, the effect to special summon, you would be able to, um, you know, make a token and then use the Vashada. So Vashada, just an incredibly strong card. And then we are on two Adhara. If you control non-effects, non you can special summon it. And then uh, if you control a face-up non-effect, you can banish this card from your hand or grave. Target one of your banished worm monsters, except this card, and add it to your hand. Typically, we're going to be adding either a Shana or Vashada off of it, just to keep that advantage train going for the next turn. Uh, it is also a level 1 Earth Tuner, so we do want to keep that in mind, because the Tenyus do uh, let us access Synchros that are below rank 8, unlike the Sword Souls for the most part. Like, let's say, for example, a Long One plus an Adhara does make a uh, rank 7 being uh, Yazi, so we do get options there. And then lastly for our tennies, we are on one at Shithana. If you control no effect monsters, you can just summon this card from your hand. If a face of non-effect monster you control is destroyed by a battle or card effect, you can banish this card from your hand or grave, target one of the destroyed monsters, special summon it, and then you can destroy one monster your opponent controls. It does not target notably, which is very, very strong, as well as being able to protect our Monk of the Tenny, which is likely to just be chilling on the end of the field. If we do have this in hand, we can plan for it. Um, that's it for our main deck monsters that are at hand traps. Now on to our, uh, engine spell traps. We are on triple sword soul emergence. Add one sword soul monster from your deck to your hand. Or if you control a synchro monster, you can add a worm instead. And if this card is banished, you can target a sword soul monster or a worm you control. Increase or decrease its level by one until end of turn. Allowing us to easily access some of these strangely worded synchros. Again, like Yazi being a seven. Um, and also another reason we are playing Shathana is because we are running Dragite, so it's just another water for us, other than Moye. We are on one Sword Soul Blackout to search target for our, um, Chi Zhao. Target one Worm Monster you control and two cards your opponent controls and destroy them. And if this card's banished, you can special summon a Sword Soul token, the, uh, the same tuner token that all the Sword Soul monsters make. And while that token's in the monster zone, the player who summon, it can't summon monsters from the extra deck except for Synchros. You'll lose each effect of Blackout once per turn. Um, a searchable Icarus attack is really strong, so since it's searchable, we only really need to be playing one of it. Next, for our non-engine, we are on Triple Pot of Desires, now at 3, 1, Called by the Grave, Triple Skull Meister, to stop graveyard effects like Flamberge, Triple Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, don't really like playing it, however, we kind of do have to, since this deck needs to be running a litany of hand traps, Triple Effect Veiler, and Triple Infinite Permanence. That's it for the main, a nice solid 40. Now onto the extra. We are on Triple Monk of the Tenyi. Just needs one non-leaked Tenyi monster. Has no effect. Uh, really good for um, fulfilling that non-effect requirement while keeping the, a monster on field and getting the Tenyis in graveyard. Really good stuff. We're on one uh, Shaman of the Tenyi. It needs two Worm monsters. You can pitch a card, target a Worm in your grave, special summon it. And for the rest of the turn, you can't activate the effects of monster, special summon from the extra deck, except for Tenyis. So we do want to be making this after we make our uh, Qi Zhao, but we can uh, afterwards, you know, make Qi Jing Long Wan or Cheng Ying or Baron. We just can't activate the effects that turn. Uh, and when an attack is declared involving your face-up non-effect monster, you can target one card your opponent controls and destroy it. Really good for going through boards if we make Shaman plus Monk in order to clear them during the combat phase. Next, we're on one Yazi. He's a tuner and a non-tuner. It's a rank... Uh, it's a Synchro 7, not a Rank 7. If your opponent can't target this card on the field card effects, you can only use each effect of Yazi once per turn. You can target one Yang Z, you control one card your opponent controls and destroy them. And when this card is destroyed by Battle or Card Effect and sent to your graveyard, you can special summon one Worm from your deck and defense position. Really good for finding just whatever Worm you need in order to climb into whatever Synchro you need. Really strong stuff. 
Next, we are on one Boxia. It is um, Synchro 8, and it's a tuner and a non-tuner worm. When this card's Synchro summoned, you can target cards on the field equal to the number of different original attributes of worms monsters used for the Synchro summon of this card. Shuffle them to the deck, and once per turn, you can target one card uh, you control and one level 4 or lower monster in your grave. Destroy that card on the field, and if you do, special summon that other monster from the grave. Really good stuff, being able to make it just with the Moie. And uh, unfortunately, if you make it just with Moie, you're only going to get um, one bounce. However, uh, sorry, not one bounce, one spin, even better. However, if we do make it with Taya, we get two. So there is that. If we make it with Vashuda and Adhara, we also do get two. Since Vashuda is a seven and Adhara is a one. So there's multiple ways you can get that um, shuffle two effect online. We are on two Shijiao, the tuner and a non-tuner worm. It's a Synchro 8. If this card is Synchro Summon, you can add to your hand or banish one Sword Soul card from your deck. Quick effect, you can banish one Sword Soul or one Worm monster from your hand or grave. Target one effect monster on the field and the gate's effects until end of turn. You can only use one Sword Soul Grandmaster Shijiao effect per turn and only once per turn. So if you activate the effect on Summon to Search, you can't negate that same turn. So do keep that in mind. Um, very powerful effect. If you're going first, you add the... Um, the blackout and then on your opponent's turn just with she shall and blackout you have a monster effect negation as well as an icarus attack which is not the worst next we are on one draco berserker of the tenine he's a tuner and a non-tuner monster it's a synchro eight if your opponent activates a monster effect quick effect you can banish it if this attacking card destroys an effect monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard this card gains attack equal to destroyed monster's original attack and make a second attack on monster in the battle phase in a row you know, it's each effective Draco Berserker once per turn. It's a 3k body and gets really, really large, as well as being interaction on your opponent's banishing cards. Your opponent activates Snake Eye Ash. Okay, chain Draco Berserker, banish that Snake Eye Ash. Now they can't grab Flamberge via the Snake Eye Ash. Pretty good stuff. I already mentioned Draga. You just need the water monster in your graveyard, and it's a spell trap negate. Really good stuff. It's pretty generic. That's pretty much all I have to say about that. We're on two Xijing Long One. If you synchro summon another worm, all those cards on the field, you can draw a card. If your opponent special summons a monster, except during the damage step, you can banish one of those monsters. And if you do inflict 1200 damage to your opponent, when your opponent activate the spell trap card or effect, quick effect, you can banish that card. And if you do inflict 1200 to your opponent, really good for getting that burn damage in. If we make Xijing Long One with Long One, that's already 1200. And then they, uh, then they summon something, that's another 12. And then they activate a spell that's another 12 so just really good stuff being able to do a big fat chunk of damage to them next we're on one chungus and he's a tuner and a non-tuner for each banished card this card gains 100 attack and defense and monsters your opponent controls lose 100 attack and defense if this card would be destroyed by card effect you can banish one card from your grave instead if this card is banished uh you can if a card's if a card is banished, you can banish one card from both your opponent's field and graveyard. You can use one effect of Chengus once per turn. Really, really strong stuff if your opponent is playing a banish heavy strategy. Um, it is a non-targeting banish of two cards, one in grave and on one field. The two most important zones in my opinion. So Chungus is very strong in my book. We're on one Baron the Floor. Uh, it can pop a card and negate a card. I think pretty much everyone really knows what this is. This is like the staple boss monster of negates. And then lastly, we are on one Ruddy Rose Dragon. Uh, this deck was playing it initially when it first came out. It needs a tuner and a non-tuner. It needs a tuner and a non-tuner. It's a Synchro 10. If this card is Synchro Summon, you can banish all cards from the graveyards. And if this card was Synchro Summon using a Black Rose Dragon or a Plant Synchro as material, you can destroy all other cards on the field. We're not getting the destroy effect, but we are going to get banishing all the graveyards. When your opponent activates a card or effect, it will destroy a card. Quick effect, you can tribute this card to get the activation. Then you can special summon one Black Rose from your extra deck or grave. We're not playing a Black Rose Dragon, so we can't get the full value of that secondary effect. But I believe we do still get to protect from an effect that would destroy cards. So not only are we banishing their whole graveyard, but we are protecting our field along the way. So I just think this is a worthwhile inclusion in the budget deck. As you see, their whole extra deck is not even above $25 even including like a Baron and a Dragite and Draco Berserker. So the price of this deck, especially in the extra deck uh, department, has gotten a lot cheaper. But yeah, this is going to be the end of this deck. Now let's go on to the next one. Alrighty guys, so for this deck, this is going to be Marincess. The price actually really surprised me when I put it all together. I thought this deck was going to be a lot more expensive than it actually is. Especially given the fact that we only have 20 engine and 20 non-engine. So we had to jam a lot of non-engine cards in here while maintaining a really cheap price point. Thank you, legendary duelist, duels of the deep. No, but um, this deck is really strong. I put the comment that suggested it 
right over here and let's get into their profile starting off we are on triple marincess blue tang if it's no more special you can send a marincess monster from your deck to the grave except for itself it's if this is sent to the graveyard as a material for a link summon of a water monster you can excavate the top three cards of your deck if you do add a marincess card amongst those cards from your deck to your hand and you can use each effective blue tang once per turn this is probably our best starter because we can use this to send a seahorse to the graveyard or another extender in order to keep going with our links once we get to those Next, we are on Triple Springtail. You can banish a Marincess monster from your graveyard. Special summon this card from your hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard, is mature for a Link Summon of a Water Monster. You can send cards on the top of your deck to the graveyard. Equal the number of Marincess cards you control. Then, if a Marincess card was sent to the graveyard by this effect, inflict 200 damage to your opponent for each Marincess card sent. You can only use each effect of Spring Girl once per turn. Really, really strong, especially in time, of course. But it is just an extender. It's a level four extender. Being able to banish your Marincesses as well as having that extra effect to basically mill more cards is just really, really strong, especially since a lot of our Marincesses kind of do want to be in the graveyard since we can add them back with our blue slug. Next, we are on a triple seahorse. You can special summon this card from your hand to a zone of Marincess link monster points to you only special summon seahorse once per turn this way. During your main phase, except the turn this was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your grave, special summon one modern monster from your hand to your zone, a Marincess Link monster points to you can lose each effect of Seahorse once per turn. Really, really strong extender, being able to special summon itself from your um, hand to the field. Um, basically being a one card Link 2 using um, Blue Slug. Um, this card is really, really good, so we want to be playing three of it. We want to see it as often as possible, and this is the main card we want to be dumping off Marincess Blue Tank. Next, we are on one Sleepy Maiden. You can target a Marincess card you control, special summon this card from your hand, and if you do, it gains this effect. While this card is in the monster zone, the targeted card can't be destroyed by your opponent's card's effect. Really good for targeting your Battle Ocean in order to protect your Battle Ocean, since it's just a Marincess card, not necessarily Marincess monster. So this could potentially be a part of your end board if you want to make sure that Battle Ocean stays around. However, it doesn't protect against stuff like Cosmic, unfortunately. You banish this card from your graveyard, target one Marincess Link monster you control, equip it with one Marincess Link from your graveyard, you can use each effect of Sleepy Maiden once per turn. Kind of mid-secondary effect, since the field spell basically does that for you, however, it is nice utility. Next, we are on Triple Pascalis, if this is normal or special, you can special summon a Marincess from your hand in defense position, except for Pascalis. During your main phase, except the turn this was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your grave, trigger a Marincess spell trap in your grave, and add it to your hand. You can use each effect of Pascalis once per turn. Really strong for that follow-up turn on that turn three, where you can add back Marincess spells and traps that are located in your graveyard. Really strong uh, recursion, as well as this card being kind of a starter. However, um, if you are going to be starting and you suspect your opponent might have interaction, I would recommend going Blue Tang instead of Pascalis, because Pascalis can kind of get like hard stopped, while Blue Tang can kind of keep going a little bit. And then lastly, for our Marincess monsters, we're on one Mandarin. We control two or more Marincess monsters. All those cards in your hand or grave. You can target one Water Link monster you control. Special summon this card to your zone. That monster points to a banish it when it leaves the field. You lose each effect of Mandarin once per turn. It is just an extender from your hand or your grave. So this is a nice foolish burial target if you have already met the requirements. And it's just an extra Marincess name in the deck that it can extend. That's it for Marincess Monsters. Nice solid 14. Now on to our Marincess cards. We're on triple Marincess dive. You can activate one of the following effects. And first of the turn after this card resolves, you can't special summon it except for water. So you target one non-link Marincess in your grave and special summon it. So it's an extension card. Or if Battle Ocean's on your field, you can special summon a Marincess from your deck. And you can only use one dive per turn. Dive is really, really good. Itelli, if you have Battle Ocean up, is really easy to do. Especially since Marincess Sea Angel searches for it. So we are going to be playing a triple Marincess Dive. We are going to be playing two Marincess Battle Ocean. All Marincess monsters you control gain 200 attack. Also, each one gains 600 attack for each Marincess card equipped to it. Monsters you control in the extra monster zone that are linked summoned using a Marincess Crystal Heart specifically as material are unaffected by your opponent's card effects. When you link summon a Marincess monster to the extra monster zone, you can equip up to three Marincess Link monsters with the different names from your grave to the link summon monster. Really strong, making us have an unaffected guy, and the EMZ is really strong, basically meaning the only real out is either running over it with a big ass number or dropping a bat kaiju on it. Uh, we are running two Battle Ocean, which is not typical, just because a lot of people nowadays are playing Cosmic Cyclone, SP Little Knight. This is the SP Little Knight tax, 
where SP Lemonade can just banish your Battle Ocean and then kind of really put you on the back foot. So we are just playing two. It is also not awful to open it because that means with Sea Angel, we can search our dive instead. So it is not the worst in the world. We are on one Marincess wave. It's searchable via our uh, triangle. You control a Marincess Link monster. You can trigger one face-up monster your opponent controls and get that face-up monster's effect until the end of the turn. And if you control a Link to or higher Marincess monster, all face-up monsters you can currently control are unaffected by your opponent's card effects until the end of turn. And if you control a Link 3 or higher Marincess monster, you can activate this card from your hand. So this is a hand trap uh, targeted negation that makes your entire board untargetable if you have a Link 2 or higher. It's typically going to be an, a hand, like a literal hand trap because you really want to be ending on a Link 3 or Link 4 being unaffected in the EMZ. So Marincess Wave is really, really good if you do actually accomplish that. But that is going to be it for the engine. I'm going to speed over a little bit of this because this is just all non-engine. We're on one Foolish Burial, one Call by the Grave, two Triple Tactics Talents, Triple Infant Impermanence, Triple Effect Veiler, Triple Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, Triple Nibiru the Primal Being, Triple Skullmeister, and one DD Crow. Then for the extra deck, we're on two Marincess Sea Angel. It needs a level four or lower Marincess monster. If this card's linked, someone you can add a Marincess spell from your deck to your hand, and that's a once per turn. We can add, uh, we have one, we are running two Marincess Blue Slug. It needs a level uh, one level four or lower Marincess monster. If this card's linked, someone you can target a Marincess monster in your grave, except for itself, and add it to your hand. We can add back the Seahorse. If we use Marincess Blue Tanks on Seahorse, we can link off Blue Tank into um, Blue Slug, and then we go Blue Tank Effect, then we go Blue Slug Effect, target uh, Seahorse, so we get that Seahorse back, and we can potentially grab one more. Really strong stuff. And it does lock us into waters, unfortunately, and we are running one Marincess Crystal Heart. It's two waters. It's unaffected by your opponent's monster effects while it's in the EMZ. During the damage step, this card battles an opponent's monster. That opponent's monster is unaffected by card effects except its own. When this card or your Marincess Link monster this card points to is targeted for an attack, you can send one Marincess monster from your hand to the grave. For that battle, your monsters can't be destroyed battle and you take no battle damage. Very neat little effect. However, this is pretty much always just going to be like a card we make just to make an unaffected guy in the EMZ. So we're never really going to be making it for its actual effect. We're on two Marincess Coral and Enemy. It's two waters. You can target one monster with a water from in your grave with 15 uh, or less attack. Special summon into his own. This card points to you. You can't special thrust the turn except for waters. If this card is sent from the field to the grave, you can target one Marincess card in your grave except for itself and add it to your hand. You lose each effect of an enemy once per turn. Keep in mind that isn't just from like monster zone to graveyard. If it's in the spell trap zone too, like equipped to a link monster and that's sent to the grave, that also counts. So you get a search there too. So we are running two of that just because it's an incredible extender card. We're on one Marincess Coral Triangle. Needs two plus Marincess monsters. You can send one water monster from your hand to the grave. Add one Marincess trap from your deck to your hand. If only your opponent controls a monster, you can banish this card from your graveyard. Special summon water link monsters from your grave. The combined link rating equals exactly three. And you can lose each effect of Coral Triangle once per turn. And you can't special summon monsters the turn you activate either effect of this card's effects once, uh, except for waters. Really strong card. Adds the trap, so it adds our interaction. It's just a generic link three. It doesn't really have too high attack, but it has a high enough attack. We can bring it back with our coral and enemy, funny enough, as well as having a neat little effect. It's kind of like Cyber Dragon Core a little bit, where you get to bring back uh, materials if you have no monsters and your opponent does have a monster. We're on one Marbled Rock, just as a corner case scenario. It needs two plus waters. It's a link three. You can target one Marincess card in your grave, except for Marbled Rock, add it to your hand. Use each effect of Marbled Rock once per turn. Once per turn, when your opponent's monster declares an attack, you can send one Marincess monster from your hand to the grave for, uh, for that battle. Monsters can't be destroyed, and also you take no battle damage. Very similarly to the Crystal Heart. Um, being able to recur your Marincess uh, cards in general is just incredibly strong, so we are just playing this as just that one of card. We're playing one Marincess Aqua Argonaut. Typically, the card we are going to be ending on needs two plus water monsters. While this card's in the EMZ, opponent's monsters cannot attack any monsters except for this one. You lose each of the following effects of Aqua Argonaut once per turn. You can target one water monster you control, one uh, card your opponent controls, return them to the hand. During your opponent's turn, when a spell, trap, or effect is activated on field, quick effect, you can special summon one of your Marincess monsters equipped to this card. And I believe it says. Uh, negate the activated effect so really strong being able to while negating effect putting field advantage but you are lowering the aqua argonauts uh stats overall so it's a very very good card being a negate boss monster that they finally gave marincess is kind of what the deck really needed especially in the terms of spell trap negation 
We are on one Marin Sess Great Bubble Reef. This is kind of like our recursion card. Once per turn during each of the standby, you can banish one Wander Monster from your graveyard or face up field, draw a card. Each time a monster is banished face up, this card gains 600 attack for each until the end of the turn. You can send one Water Monster from your hand to the grave, special summon one of your banished Marin Sess monsters, and you can lose each effect of Great Bubble Reef once per turn. So being able to summon your banished Marin Cesses is really strong, especially since a lot of the Marin Cesses will banish themselves one way or another, either via Springtail, or your Mandarin banishing itself. So we have ways to get those back with Great Bubble Reef. And then Great Bubble Reef can always turn into World Sea Dragon Zelantis, and he's one effect monster. You can, only use, you can only control one Zelantis. You can only use each of the following effects of Zelantis once per turn. During your main phase, you can banish all monsters on the field and special summon as many possible that were banished using this effect to their owner's fields face up or face down defense. During the battle phase, quick effect, you can destroy cards on the field equal to the number of co-linked monsters on the field. Uh, so if you, for example, banish all of your link monsters and then you bring them all back so they're all, I don't know, let's say co-linking to each other because if you look at them, a lot of them do have those left and right arrows, which is quite neat, as well as a lot of them having those downward pointing arrows, which is really quite neat. So we can get a lot, lot of value of Zelantis. It's a water, so we're never going to be locked out of it. But that is our last link monster. Now onto our XEs. We're on one Dweller, the Snake Eye Tax, one Bahamut Shark for Totally Awesome. But that is going to be the end of this profile. Now let's go on to the next one. For this next one, it might look a little bit familiar to some of you guys. This is going to be Runic Orcas Cartesia. Um, this is, again, the budget version. It's $96 overall. This one was my own creation, so no comment there. But However, there was a comment mentioning Runic, so I am going to put that up here. But yeah, the whole point of this is to just get your Orcus stuff online. This has a little bit of a slightly different win con. We're trying to win by decking our opponent out with this one. All of our Orcus are always recycle themselves, so we're never pretty much going to deck out. We always have the Orcus engine online as long as we're smart with our resources. So we can constantly just annoy the hell out of our opponent by just basically juggling all of our resources while making sure they can't play the game. So let's get into the deck profile. We're on Triple Gear Sue on Normal Special. It'll send an Orchestra World Legacy from our deck to Grave. And there's two more cards in the same column. This card can become a tuner. Not really too relevant. Uh, if this is the only monster you control, you get to make a token to each player's field, which is quite nice. It's a level one token. So this is a one card Galatea. Um, so we are going to be playing three of it. We're on two Orcus Nightmare, can't be destroyed battle or card effect, Link Monster, funny enough. You can banish this card from your grave, target a face-up monster on the field, you can't special summon monsters except for dark monsters, so after the turn, you can send one dark machine from your deck to the grave by banishing itself and targeting a monster on field, and then that monster will gain attack equal to the level of the um, machine sent from deck to grave uh, times 100, so it's a level 4, gains 400, pretty simple. We're on one Orcus Harpoor, because that's all we can be playing. You can banish the special summon an Orcus from your deck, and then you're dark locked. All these uh, graveyard effects of the Orcus do dark lock us, which is quite unfortunate. Harpoor is the best one, and we would be playing more if we could, but it is only at one. We are playing double Orcus Symbol Skeleton, being able to banish itself from the graveyard to target an Orcus monster in your graveyard and special summon it, and then again, dark locking us. Uh, we are playing two of it, just we want to make sure we always have access to these resources so we can keep looping them, so we are playing two. We're on one Brass Bombard. You can banish this card from your grave. Special summon an Orcus from your hand, except for Brass Bombard. You can't special summon monsters rather the turn, except for Darks. Really strong. Um, it does let us play around some interaction points. So if you normal summon Brass Bombard and then go to Link Karibo, banish Brass Bombard from our graveyard. Special summon Gearsu. That does fix the problem if our Gearsu does get infinite and permanenced. Um, it does actually allow us to still end on a Galatea with a Crescendo in the back row, which is quite nice. And then lastly for our Orcus monsters, we're on one World Legacy World 1, the Honorary Orcus. You can banish this card from your graveyard, target a banished Orcus monster in your banishment, and special summon it to your field, and then you are dark locked. So it's really good for getting those banished Orcus back into rotation, while also special summoning them, not even just putting them back in grave or anything. It puts them on field for active material, which is really, really good. But that's it for our main deck Orcus. Now onto our Cartesia engine. Uh, we're on triple Cartesia. That's it for our Cartesia engine. Oh, actually, we do also have triple Brandon High Spirits. Uh, Brandon High Spirits, the only target in this deck now is going to be Sprint the Iron Dash Dragon, just pitching an Orcus. So it is a little bit more situational, but we only have Orcus and Cartesias. So every single monster in this deck is technically a target for Brandon High Spirits to find Cartesia. So that's always a win in our book. 
Uh, we are on one orchestrated return, one orchestrated babble, and or an orchestrated crescendo. Orchestrated return says discard a wood legacy and orcus, draw two. Orchestrated babble makes all of our orcus quick effect. It can return itself from graveyard to hand, except the turn it was sent there. And then orcus crescendo is an omni negate that banishes the card it negates, as well as when it's in graveyard, you can banish it to add a dark machine from your deck to your hand. And then you can't summon for the rest of the turn, uh, this turn except for dark machines. So if you summoned anything but dark machines before, you can't use crescendo. But that's it for our Orcus. Now on for our Runics. Since we are playing Runic, we aren't playing any hand traps. So, especially since this is Runic stun, so we really want to be seeing as many Runics as possible. We do want to keep in mind the Runics are lights and darks, so we can use them as fusion material with Cartesia in order to make Greg Guggenall in order to send our Orcus Nightmare, which is the entire point of the deck. We are playing Triple Runic Tip, being able to add a Runic card from uh, deck to hand, as well as banishing the top card of our opponent's deck all the runic cards make us skip our next battle phase after activating so we're never really planning on going to the battle phase to like kill our opponent we're trying to just basically time them out or like wait for them to morally give up i guess so we're on triple tip because it's the one that searches everything we're on triple freeze and curses target effect monster opponent controls negates effects that'll end of turn then banish the top three of their deck and or all the runic cards can also special summon a runic monster um fusion monster to emz zone so that's how we do get that secondary effect we are on triple freezing curses being able to target a special summon monster your opponent controls and destroy it and then banish the top two of their deck as well as that extra monster zone effect one runic destruction being able to destroy a spell trap they control and then banishing the top four of their deck one runic dispelling being if your opponent adds a card from their deck to their hand except during the draw phase discard a random card from their hand and banish the top two of their deck basically dark lawing them a little bit we're on two slumber target one face up monster on the field next time it'll be destroyed by battle or card effect this turn it's not and then uh it can't attack this turn so really good for locking down cards that might kill us really good for protecting our cards like dingirsu um so just an incredible card and then this also does banish the top three of our opponent's deck. I almost missed that one. We're on Triple Smiting Storm. This is one of the best banish-focused uh, cards in the Runic archetype. Banish cards on the top of your opponent's deck equal to the, up to the number of cards they control, period. So they have five cards. Banish the top five. So really good, as well as being able to bring that EMZ out. We're on two Runic Fountain. You can activate one... Uh, Three, two, one. We're on two Runic Fountain. You can activate Runic Quick Play spell cards from your hand during your opponent's turn, making them hand traps. Once per turn, if you activate a Runic Quick Play spell card, you can target three Runic Quick Play spells in your grave, place them on the bottom of the deck, and then draw that same number of cards. Basically, being able to refill our hand as we activate our Runic cards is incredibly strong. Uh, we're playing the maximum amount we can, as well as the Terraforming. Although the Terraform can also search the Babel, so it's a multi purpose card. And then lastly, for our Runic's cards, we are one Runic Allure. Each time a Quick Play a spell card it activates banish the top card of your opponent's deck and you can only activate one runic allure this doesn't just work for our runics but keep in mind brandon high spirit is a quick play spell card that keeps on coming back to our hand every turn as long as a fusion card was sent there so we do have multiple quick plays as well as called by the grave um so yeah that's a nice solid 40 card deck only 48 there however the em the extra deck does eat up a lot of price too especially these two grand Goganals. We're on one Link Kariba, one IP Masquerina, two Galate the Orcus Automaton is two plus effects, including an Orcus monster. This Link card can't be destroyed in battle. So if it's pointing to anything or anything's pointing to it, it just can't be destroyed in battle, period. You can target one of your banished machine monsters, shuffle out the deck, then set an Orcus spell trap directly from your deck. Plays around Droll, plays around Ash. Really, really good. Um, so yeah, we can add our we can set our crescendo, which needs a link monster in order to activate, which Galate fulfills the conditions of. We can add our Babel to make everything quick effects. We can activate Galatea again on our opponent's turn. So really good stuff. We are on one Nightmare Unicorn as a removal card and because SP Little Knight is way above our budget. We're on one Long Gears to the Orcus Orchestrator. Really, really crazy card. Two plus effects, including an Orcus. This Link card can't be destroyed by card effects. You can target two of your Banished Machine monsters, shuffle them into the deck, and then you can send one Link monster your opponent controls to the graveyard. This doesn't mean... Um, that on Gearsu has to be pointing to it. It just means anything has to be pointing to it. So if your opponent like puts something like to a zone their link monster points to, Long Gearsu can still get rid of that, which is really, really strong. And a lot of people don't know that off the top of their head. So yeah, we are playing that Long Gearsu. It also is the card that shuffles back the most of our banished Orcus in order to recycle most in one go. 
Next, we're on two Dingirsu, Orcist of the Evening Star, because it comes up. You can special summon Dingirsu by just slapping him on top of an Orcist like Link monster you control, but you can only special summon Dingirsu once per turn, period. If it is special summoned, you get to either send a card your opponent controls to the graveyard or attach a banished uh, machine monster from your banishment to Dingirsu. And then if uh, cards on your field would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can detach material from Dingirsu instead. So it protects your field. It is a non-targeting, non-destruction removal, as well as also being recursion. So just an incredible card all around. Yeah, just an incredible card all around. Next for our uh, Runics, we're on two Hugin Runic Wing. The special summon from the uh, to the EMZ, you can discard one card, add one Runic Field spell from your deck to your hand. If another card you control will be destroyed by card effect, you can manage this card you control instead. If this card in the field will be destroyed by other card effect, return this card to the extra deck. So the thing with the Runics that works super well with the Orcus is a lot of the Runic e extra deck cards need you to discard cards for their effects. And one of the best discard targets in the game all the orcists so we are playing two huguenor to get the field spell we're playing one moon in you get a pitch a card to add a continuous runic spell card that's why we're playing the alert we're on one gary can't be destroyed by card effects if this card is special summon from the extra deck you can target one not quick play a runic spell in your grave add it to your hand and when this card is destroyed by battle you can target one card in the field and destroy it being able to add back either a runic fountain or a runic allure is really really strong and then lastly, you're playing one Sprint for our Brandon High Spirits targets for machines, and then two Grand Guggenal. This is the center focus of the deck, and he's Cartesia and a lighter Dark Monster, which is our entire deck and extra deck. If this card is Fusion Summon, you can send one level six or higher lighter Dark Monster from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard. If a monster is special summoned by your opponent's activated monster effect, except during the damage step, you can banish this card from your field of grave, special summon a Dogmatica monster from your main deck, or a Despia monster from your extra deck, and you can use each effect of Greg Guggenal once per turn. Unfortunately, we don't have the um, price in order to really be doing that secondary effect unless we're going with the um, Despia Link. I'm uh, not Link. The Despia Big Fusion. Um, unless we're playing uh, Pro Skinion, that's like the best target for it, other than um, Lulu. Um, but Greg Guggenal can send Orcus Nightmare, and then Orcus Nightmare can send Orcus Harpoor, and then Orcus Harpoor can special summon Gearsu, and then Gearsu can summon, uh, send World Wand, and then you see how it goes. It's the full Orcus combo, just by summoning Greg Guggenal. It's also a body on field that we can immediately use to link off into Galatea, which is quite nice. But that's gonna be the end of this profile, now on to the next one. For this next one, we have Sharks. Here's gonna be the comments showing those right over here. I'm going to go through this one a little bit more quick. It's just a rank four uh, focused strategy. Uh, we do have about 10 cards in here being non-engine, more like 13. And yeah, we have 13 non-engine cards, uh, 14, I guess. Oops. Um, we are only running XE's cards. Uh, this deck is 106. Uh, let's get to the profile. First off, we're on Triple Buzzsaw Shark. You can target one Water Monster you Control, special summon from your deck in the defense position of Fish Monster, the same level as that monster with a different name. If you do, you can't activate its effects and you can't special summon monsters from the extra deck this turn except for XCs. You can use each effective Buzzsaw once per turn. And this card is used for an XC summon of a Water. It can be treated as level, level 3 or level 5, which is really, really strong. We're on one Lantern Shark. If it's no more special summon, you can activate this effect. Special summon one level 3, 4, or 5 Water Monster from your hand in defense position except for Lantern Shark. You can't special some monsters from the extra deck except for XCs. You need each effect the Lantern Shark once per turn. Once per turn, this card's used for an XC summon of a water. It can be treated as a level 3 or 5. So letting us go into our either our Torpedo or into our Armor Fortress or whatever 5 we want to be going into, which is really, really nice. We're on Triple Abyss Shark. If this is used for the XC summon of a number monster, you can treat it as a level 3 or 4. If all monsters you control are waters, minimum 1, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if you do, add one level 3, 4, or 5 fish monster from your deck to your hand, except for Shark. For the rest of the turn, you can't special summon monsters except for waters. Also, double the first battle damage inflicted to your opponents this turn by number monsters battling another monster. And you can only use each effect of Abyss Shark once per turn. Really niche secondary effect. However, the first effect is crazy. Being able to bring itself out from uh, hand to field and then also adding a card is insane value. As well as having that same level modulation, very similar to Buzzsaw and Lantern. We are on one Crystal Shark. If this card is used for the XC Summon of a number, it can be treated as level 3 or 4. If this card is in your hand or grave, you can target one water on the field and special summon this card. Uh, if this, if you do have that monster's attack and you can't special the monsters from the extra deck except for XCs, you can use each effect of Crystal Shark once per turn. 
Then we're playing three lifeless leaf fish in order to pair with that crystal shark. And when this is summoned, you can send one fish from your deck to the grave, except for lifeless leaf fish. You banish this card from your grave, target three fish monsters in your grave, shuffle those monsters in the deck, and then draw one card. You can use each effect of a leaf fish once per turn. Really good for uh, recycling our used up waters, including the extra deck cards, which is really important. So we are needing to play three leaf fish. And then for our extenders, we're on double angler. If you control water, you can special summon this card from your hand, but you can't special monsters from your hand for the rest of the turn. So it's going to be the last thing we really specials from hand. We're on two silent sea nettle. If you control water, you can special summon this card from your hand, but you can't special summon monsters except for waters the turn you activate this effect. You can manage this card from your grave, target three waters in your grave, shuffle them in the deck, and you can use each effect of silent sea nettle once per turn. Another way to recur our XE's monsters. We're on one XE's Remora. You can special summon this card from your hand, but I didn't have to touch but you can uh, we're on one Xyz Remora. You can special summon this card from your hand by detaching two materials from monsters you control. When this summon this way, you can target two level four fish monsters in your grave. Special summon that those targets in defense position. Their effects are negated. They can't attack or change their battle positions. It can't be used for materials except for an Xyz summon. Uh, for an Xyz summon, except for the Xyz summon of a water monster. So let's us uh, basically rip two materials off and then make a free Xyz off of them, which is really nice. And then lastly, we're on triple copies of Tenny Spirit Shathana, one of the best cards we can start with if we do open it, just being able to throw them on the field, which is quite nice. That's it for our monsters. Now we are on a triple foolish burial goods in order to send our ice barrier from deck to graveyard. Ice barrier being uh, you can manage this card from your grave, send one level five or higher water monster from your deck to the grave. Then you can add one water monster from your graveyard to your hand. Also, until the end of turn, after this effect resolves, you can't specialize on monsters except for waters. So really good at sending your Abyss Shark and then adding your Abyss Shark. Really good stuff. Um, so we are running Foolish Burial Goods for that. We are playing one White Mirror, target a level four or lower fish in your grave. Special Summon it, then you can add one monster from your deck to the hand with the same original name as that Special Summon monster. You can only activate one White Mirror once per turn. Really good at extending, like let's say for example, you have a Buzzsaw in Grave and you have nothing else in hand. You bring back that Buzzsaw, add a Buzzsaw from deck to hand, and now you have follow-up for next turn is quite nice we are we are playing full armor so we're playing one full armor xc's target one xc's monster in the field immediately after this effect resolves xc summon one xc's monster using monsters you control you can banish this card from your grave target one xc's monster you control equip one other xc's monster from your face of the field or graveyard to that card as an equip spell with the following effects the equipped monster gains attack equal to this card's attack and if the equipped monster will be destroyed by battle or card effect destroy this card instead kind of like uh the magic equivalent of totem armor which is quite nice um and then lastly, we are playing one Goza match. And then for our non-engine, we're on triple Ash Blossom, triple Droll, triple Imperm, one called by, two Tactics, and a Kaiju. For our extra deck, we're playing one Totally Awesome because we are playing Bahamut. We're playing one Xyz Armor Torpedo and for our Xyz Armor Package. We're on one Abyss Dweller, part of the Mandatory Snake Guy Package. We're on two Stealth Kragen because of the main things we want to be making is number four Stealth Kragen, which we can use Abyss Shark for because it is a number monster. All face-up monsters in the field become water. Nice job, Snake Eyes. Once return in the main phase, quick effect, you can destroy one water monster your opponent controls, and if you do inflict damage to your opponent equal to half the attack they had on field. If this XC summon card is destroyed, you can special summon one uh, Stealth Kragen spawns from your extra deck under the, up to the number of materials this card has. Then you can attach up to one water monster from your graveyard to each of those special summon cards. So that's why you're playing two Kragen spawns in the extra, just as a worst case scenario. We are playing two Stealth Kragen. We are playing one Silent Honor Arc as well as a Silent Honor Dark because I thought it was quite funny to pair with that Nash Knight, uh, part of that rank five uh, water strategy. And this is the only water uh, sea monsters that we have, except for bad ones like Rag Definity. So we are playing Silent Honor Dark. We're playing Xyz Armor Fortress in order to grab our full armor at Xyz. And then with the Nash Knight, we are playing CXC's Nash Knight, as well as Full Armor Dark Ray Lancer for the Full Armor XC's and a Zeus. So that's going to be the end of this profile, and let's move on to our final one. For our final deck profile, we are covering Tri Brigade um, Fire King. Tri Brigade Fire King, I already covered this deck before, uh, one of the full profiles. However, we're going to cover it real quick here. Uh, thank you so much for the comments. I'm going to pop them up on screen right now. Um, this deck is quite competent, sitting at just 103.32. A lot of the price, however, is going to be sitting in this extra deck with this access code, Apollosa. Just a bunch of really strong cards. So let's get into the profile. We are on Triple Fractal, being able to send itself from hand or field to graveyard to send a level three or lower beast beast warrior or wing beast from your deck to the grave. And then you can banish number of um, all the tri brigades are going to have this tri brigade quote unquote effect. So I'm going to call it the tri, uh, the tri effect, where you can banish beast beast warrior or wing beast from your graveyard while their face up on field is an ignition. 
the special summon a link monster with the amount of the link rating of the banished monster. So if you banish two monsters, you can summon a link two from your extra deck. If you banish three, link three, four, link four, so on and so forth. So in all the tri-brigades are going to have that tri effect where if they're on field, you can add ignition, do that. So we're playing tri uh, triple fractal in order to send start cards. We're playing triple kit. We can banish any number of beast beast warrior wing beast in your grave, special summon one. Yeah, the tri type effect and and then it has the other effect. Where if it's sent from deck to grave, you can send a tri brigade card except for itself from deck to grave, which is really nice being able to load up that graveyard. The main card we're going to be sending from deck to grave is going to be tri brigade nerval. Uh, when it's sent to graveyard, we can add a tri brigade monster except for nerval from deck to hand, which is really strong. And then lastly, for our tri brigades, we're on double Keros. So you can pitch uh, another uh, another beast, beast warrior, or wing beast to special summon this card from our hand. Uh, really good extender, especially since it has that um, tri beast effect, which is really nice. Now onto our fire kings. We're on triple tonics. Uh, since we aren't playing snake eye fire king, we need to be playing three of this. Double Garunix. Um, if a monster that was originally fired is a joy battle or card effect, you can special summon this card from your graveyard or your hand. If this is normal or special, you can destroy one fire from your uh, deck or face up field. Main thing we want to be destroying Tri Brigade Kits of Fire. And then Kit when destroyed, we'll send Nerval, and then Nerval will get us into all of our Tri Brigades. So just playing the Fire Kings lets us go into our Tri Brigades, which is quite nice. We are on Triple Kieran. During the main phase of this card's in your hand, quick effect, you destroy one other fire monster in your hand or field. Again, we can, if you have if you open Tri Brigade Kit, we can do that, especially on our opponent's turn, which is quite nice. If you do special summon this card, um, this card, if this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one Fire King monster from your hand or graveyard. Except for Kieran, then you can destroy one card on the field. Not targeting destruction, really strong. That's a hand trap, really, really strong. So we are playing three of it. We're playing one Baron. If you face a Fire King monster, you control is destroyed by card effect. You can special summon this card from your hand. Once per turn during the standby phase, after this card is destroyed by card effect and sent to the graveyard, add one Fire King from your deck to your hand, except for Arvata. Uh, an extender that can, um, at the end of turn, let you add Fire King cards is really strong. So we're just going to be playing one of it. And then we are um, playing one Arvata. When the, uh, uh, when a monster effect is activated while well, this monster is on the field, quick effect, you negate the activation. If you do destroy one other Fire Monster in your hand or face of field, we can destroy Kit, which is quite nice. And if this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can trigger one fire beast beast warrior wing beast monster in your graveyard, except for Arvata and special summon it, but negate its effects and destroy it during the end phase. You can use each effect of Arvata once per turn. Being able to bring back cards if it's destroyed is really nice, especially since we're a link centric deck. Uh, but that's it for our main deck monsters. Now onto our spell traps. We're on Fire King Island at one. During your main phase, you can destroy one monster in your hand or field. And if you do, add one Fire King monster from your deck to your hand. Really strong. If you control no monsters, you can special summon one Fire Winged Beast monster from your hand. Most of the time, going to be Ponix. So, really, really strong. We are on Double Sanctuary. When this card is activated, you can place a Fire King Island from your deck face up field zone. Once per turn, if this card in your field zone is destroyed by card effect, you can destroy one Fire monster from your hand or face up field instead. Once per turn, your opponent summons something, you can make an XCs. We're not playing the XCs since we're link focused. So this is mostly a way to get to our Sanctuary. And I'm just playing two because we want to see it sometimes, but not all the time, you know. We're playing one Fire King Skyburn. You can target an equal number of Fire King monsters you control and cards your opponent controls and destroy them. If a Fire King monster you control would be destroyed by card effect, you can banish this card from your grave instead. You're going to use each card of, uh, effect of... You're going to use one Fire King Skyburn effect per turn and only once that turn. And then lastly, for our engine cards, we're playing one Tri Brigade Revolt, being able to banish um, Special Summon, our Beast Beast Warrior, or Wing Beast Monster that are banished or in our graveyard, but negate their effects, and then immediately after it resolves, Link Summon a mo Link Monster using only those monsters. You can use Revolt once per turn. This is a searchable card, so we'll only be playing one of it. Next, we're on Triple Tanky in order to search our Fractal or any of our other Beast Warriors, like our Vata or Barong, which is quite nice having that added utility. One Foolish Burial in order to send Kit if need be. One one for one in order to grab Nerval or our Ponix. And then for Hand Traps, we're on Double Veiler, Triple Droll, Triple Ash, and Double Skullmeister. Or our Extra Deck, we're on one Salomon Great All Mirage because we can link off Tri Brigade Kit or Tri Brigade Nerval in order to get their searches. One Firefighting Darumadol, it's a Beast Warrior that we can special summon using a Tri Brigade effect that pops back row, which is quite nice. Two Tri Brigade Farajeet, the Baron Blossom, being able to special summon anything that's Tri type and level four or lower from our hand to our field, allowing us to like, you know, get out that Arvada nice and easy. One Tri Brigade Bear Rum, the Rampart Blaster, allowing us when it's sent to graveyard to um, add a Tri Brigade Spell Trap from our deck to our hand and then place a card from our hand at the bottom of the deck. 
basically adding a revolt as well as having a nifty little effect in order to get our banished cards back. We're on one IP Mascarena. We are on one Ancient Warriors Double Dragon Lords, one of the cards we want to be ending on with our Tri Brigades, basically allowing us to send a card from our hand or field to the grave and bounce a card our opponent controls. Uh, if we have our tanky up, that's incredible because we can send our tanky to the grave after it's gotten its value in order to bounce a card, which is really nice. We are on one Heat of Fire Charmer Blaze since we're playing a fire deck and it benefits us to be playing this. We're on one Donner Dagger for Hire. It's a Beast Warrior, but we can also just hard make it in order to pop a card. One Havos, uh, Havos or Gig, the Desperate Doom Eagle. Probably didn't say that one, right? Um, this is a neat little card that I like. It used to be played a long time ago in old tri format. Quick effect, you can target one monster your opponent's graveyard, shuffle into the deck, and you can use each effect of it once per turn. Being able to shuffle back your Snake Eye player's graveyard cards uh, like is really, really strong, so I would recommend looking into this. We're playing one Rugal, being able to bring back our cards from the graveyard and then bouncing it to hand at the end of the turn. We're on Double Shurig, the best card in the deck. It needs two plus Beast Beast Warrior and or Wing Beast Monsters. If this card special summon or if another Beast Beast Warrior or Wing Beast Monster special summon to your field, you can banish one card in the field, period. Uh, doesn't target. It banishes. So it's just like Dengirsu, really, really strong. So we are playing two of it just because we plan on at least making one, if not two. And then if it does, if they do happen to out it, it does actually search cards equal to the number of banished Beast Beast Warrior or Wing Beasts. So let's say you have two banished, you can add a level two or lower from deck to hand. So really, really strong. We're on one access code talker because Tri Brigade has like no real way to put like a giant guy and like remove a lot of stuff all at once. All of our extra deck stuff is different attributes. So we could have a lot of popping ability with this access code talker. And then last we are on, on Apollosa, Bow of the Goddess. Uh, we can typically make this in our turn one if we are open mostly Tri Brigades. So we are just playing it to play it. But this is going to be the last deck of the day. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If the case you still are, if you have any decks that you want to be seeing in a future budget deck video, please feel free to recommend them in the description below. But other than that, I'm going to be seeing y'all later. Bye bye. Thank y'all so much for watching the video. It really means a lot. If you want to talk to other Yu-Gi-Oh players in a competitive manner, please feel free to check out my Discord. We are still growing, but we would love to have you. And we plan to do some events sometime soon. You'll also be able to do cool stuff like vote on future videos and topics of videos, so swing by sometime and check us out. I also started a Patreon, so there'll be linked in the description of my videos from now on. Donating would mean a lot and would help in producing these videos. Right now, there's only one tier being Tier 1 Femboy. This tier includes access to an exclusive Discord channel where you'll be able to talk amongst other Femboys and have access to discussions with me as well, as well as getting a shout out in every video following at your patronage. Thank you so much for all your support.